Sonny Perdue became our 31st U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, April 25th, 2017. Took a little while, but we're glad you're there. He's raised on a dairy and diversified row crop farm in rural Georgia, served in the Air Force, rose to the rank of captain, then he became a great veterinarian and practiced there in North Carolina. Member of the Georgia State Senate for 11 years, ele elected pr president pro tempo of his Senate colleagues, then a two-term very successful career in ag business, voting on commodities, focusing on commodities and transportation, and really enterprises that span the southeastern United States. And we consider the southeast part of this show. We have lots of folks from the southeast here. And then he served uh, as a board member for the National Grain Feed Association, president of the Georgia, F Georgia Feed and Grain Association, Southeastern Feed and Grain Association. So obviously someone who's been raised, indoctrinated, fully a wonderful background in our, in our industry. He's been married to Mary Ruff Purdue for 45 years. Four adult children, 14 grandchildren. They served as foster parents for eight children awaiting adoption. He's a licensed airplane helicopter pilot, avid and outdoor spokesman. And I just wanted to say, as I was mentioning earlier, he is introduced before he ever got here by the wonderful agency work of USDA. And at least in the Mid-South, we have some of the best in the country. AMS, ARS, um, Farm Service Agency, Risk Management Agency, APHIS Food Safety, you name it. It's all kind of touched by us. So I want to thank you now for spending time with us and for being such an unapologetic supporter and promotion for agriculture. Welcome to the show. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Tim, for that uh, great uh, introduction, and it's good to be with you all. Uh, first time I've ever been at the show, and uh, Tim said he'd been doing this for 66 years. I think he looks pretty good for doing that. So, uh, uh, But thank you for your kind compliments about uh, the industry's relationship with uh, USDA, and uh, I, I look forward to taking that back to our people. It's really important as we talk about our vision for the USDA uh, one of the things we want to be is uh, responsive to our customers, and uh, you and the industry are, are our customers, and we want to we want to be helpful in all aspects of intersection there. David, glad to have you, and some very nice remarks uh, regarding you, and I look forward to being with you and your district later today here as we go go around. But uh, it's a good day. Uh, obviously, one of those leaders was just uh, clear this past week. We've been waiting on him for a long while, Bill Northey. Uh, formerly the uh, Secretary of Agriculture for Iowa, done a great job, an authentic farmer there, and knows the business. He's going to lead our uh, new organization called F FBAC. That's uh, Farm uh, Production and Conservation. It's the combination of our FSA and our NRCS, or as well as our RMA. We're going to try to be a one-stop shop so you all don't have to go all over Tarnation to get your business done with the USDA. So it's good to hear, Tim, about the other... Uh, relationships with uh, the other agencies. I told Tim, I said, you know, y'all are even involved with food safety. I mean, food safety, y'all eating that cotton seed or something? And he said, yeah, we do, and told me about how to how to get that done. So I want to hear, hear if you don't have those kind of responses, if we're here next year and you you find some challenges that we have, then uh, I, I want to hear about them. We want to we know where we're doing well and where we're not doing as well as we could be. So that's the goal. My goal for... Uh, USDA is to be the most efficient, the most effective, and the most customer-focused organization in the federal government. And I mean that. We, uh, uh, we want to do that. I mean, we're going to be judged by that, by, by what you tell us, not by what our press office says. So uh, you're the customers, and you make that decision. I told people that <coughs> my goal for, the, uh, for uh, USDA was to be the, the Amazon of the federal government as far as as customer service goes, and uh, they said, that's pretty high aspiration. You sure you want to do that? I said, yeah. You, had you rather me be aspiring to be the U.S. Postal Service? No. But anyway, <laughs> for, for all you postal people out there, I don't mean that, really. You know, you all do a great <laughs> job. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we want to be on the money all the time, and uh, thank you so much for letting me come be with you today. Uh, growing up in middle Georgia, actually in Houston County, that's next to Dooley County in Georgia. You might have heard of Dooley County. 
knows a little bit about cotton there. When Tim said I grew up on a diversified row crop farm, uh, we diversified and uh, all the row crops, including cotton. I remember my father had the first cotton picker I can ever remember seeing. It was about this wide, about this tall, and it, 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 its basket had about that big around. It could pick about 50 pounds a day. So uh, uh, I told him, I said, you know, I told Mr. Brock, I said, it was a bad when you, when you realize you want to get out of the cotton business and go in the dairy business. So, uh, but anyway, as before all those fancy machines I see with those roll balers out here and uh, those kind of things, but it's a uh, Cotton industry's come quite a, quite a way since uh, the early 60s in that regard as we were, you know, taking those bricks and beating those bull weevils in Georgia. So uh, it's, uh, it's amazing the technology and innovation that's created and the productivity. I mean, boy, you used to go to town and brag about a bale of cotton to the acre. Think about that now. And that's just in a few years. And when I hear the three-plus bales out there going further, and, and it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. That shows you the... The wonderful productivity, the innovation, the resiliency of the American farmer from cotton and many other ways as well. I know most of you probably do other things besides cotton, but you've been great producers overall, and that brings us really to a challenge of how do we get rid of it all. And that's uh, honestly one of our biggest challenges. I go across the country. Uh, trade is always at the top of the list and talking about, uh, you know, where we're going to sell more. And I've got... Uh, Mr. Brock mentioned uh, Ted McKinney, who he'd known for many years. Uh, Ted is our undersecretary for Foreign Agricultural Services. The 14 Farm Bill caught, created that position, but we didn't fill it until we got there. And Ted McKinney is a great, uh, a great guy, great salesman. In fact, uh, he's in India right now. Huge market there, obviously, you know. It's been tough to crack, but uh, this is his second trip to India, and he's, uh, he's around the world selling and doing everything we can to, to sell and market the, the great production that you all have uh, going forward. So I want to thank you for being such great patriots, great citizens, and uh, it's interesting in light of the recent news today, I think about this, is that agriculture is not an industry where we need to have tariffs to protect. We need to have other people to reduce their tariffs so we can send our production and abundance overseas. So I think we ought to be proud of that, uh, that uh, industry there. We, uh, and frankly, it's never been easy. It hadn't been easy. Farming's not easy. You know that. You all have, uh, it's a kind of a roller coaster, and you all have been on a roller coaster. As you know, in the 2014 Farm Bill, prices were a lot different then. The WTO case had just come about, and your industry thought that it may be better to take a break from Title I for a while. And uh, you did that, and then the, we saw what happened to prices immediately after that. It's kind of like, you know, if you want the market to go down, you just sell. Or if you want it to go up, you just sell that day, right? It's going to go up the next day, see? And uh, that's the way it worked, and that's what happened. We uh, got out of Title I, and the market, not just in cotton, but other commodities kind of tumbled in on us, and uh, we're still facing that. So uh, we're here today to talk about... Uh, in fact, I'm here to talk, talk about something I think probably all of you want to hear about, but uh, I'm going to let Mr. Brock say that later at the end of his place so you all stay for his uh, presentation, okay? Uh, I'll give you the notes, Mr. Brock. Uh, actually, I'm here to, uh, so I can take uh, Ronnie Lee off Ronnie Lee's speed dial. Ever since I was announced by last December as a potential candidate, uh, Ronnie Lee started dialing me three times a day about cotton, cotton gin cost share. So, uh, and uh, I've already seen some uh, friends here from Georgia, and uh, they, uh, they remind me all the time about, uh, about that. So, in order to get the uh, elephant in the room off the, uh, off the podium here and push it out here in the audience, uh, we are announcing today a cotton gin cost share program for the 2016 crop. <laughs> so I, Sign up will begin March the 12th, and our people tell us they'll be ready for that. Obviously, your applications are pretty much pre-populated based on your reported planting acres, so we should be able to do that pretty quickly. Hopefully, get a little money in your pocket to, uh, uh, to uh, buy those seeds and other inputs that you need for this crop coming up here. And uh, interestingly, it's, it took longer than we wanted. I looked under 
in between every cushion and every couch in the USDA and kind of had to convince OMB that uh, this was a program that we had to, had to do since we didn't have another safety net in Title I and that uh, we, uh, we found the money. We've, we found it really before Christmas. We were hoping to announce it then. That's when the disaster bill started uh, coming about and uh, we were asked to kind of hold off to see how the disaster bill would, would uh, uh, fit in with this and to do that. I think all of you know that uh, a champion for this program has been uh, Chairman Mike Conaway on the House side. David can tell you that. He's, uh, he's been a champion as well as you all have been a champion, literally. Uh, I think every state where cotton grown and then half the ones where it's not, everywhere I've gone I've heard about uh, uh, cotton gin cost share and uh, you all had a very strong mobilization effort certainly within Congress. David can tell you that. He and his colleagues and Diane can tell you that many of them had uh, heard from you all and their colleagues bound together. All of your agencies, anyone involved in the cotton industry kept talking about the need here uh, because in the safety net that the Farm Bill ought to be, there wasn't that safety net for cotton there and hopefully this will ease some of it. It's never, uh, whether you use insurance or whatever, there's never a fully made hole and this won't make you whole either but hopefully it will uh, it will help as you under as we understand uh, the other things I need to tell you this I want you to listen really loud and clear now uh, you never say never but I do want you to know I think this may be the last one so listen up I don't want to hear from y'all about the 2017 cost gen share okay so uh, we are uh, we're going on to a farm bill thanks to Chairman Conaway and the colleagues in the house uh, in the balanced budget amendment uh, they, uh, they put in a provision certainly to get back into Title I, but the Farm Bill's not over. They've still got to battle on the Farm Bill uh, going forward here and make sure that we get that. To, uh, they set the stage for uh, the uh, CBO and the, and the Budget Office to uh, recognize that, but it still has to be done in the Farm Bill, so don't, don't stop yet. Make sure that this gets uh, formalized in the Farm Bill both dairy and cotton, which were the two sectors that frankly most people acknowledge that did not fare well in the 14 Farm Bill. Those programs like Stacks and the MPP and dairy did not fare as well from a safety net perspective as they had hoped uh, you know, in the, when the 14 Farm Bill was created. Uh, this is the cure for that, both in the dairy and in the cotton. Uh, but we've got to make sure that it does get formalized and memorialized in the 2018 Farm Bill. Chairman Conaway and his committee, I think, are well along the way in those areas. Uh, obviously, USDA doesn't write the Farm Bill, but we advise and consult and give facts and figures anytime we're asked about that by the committee or by members or whatever uh, is needed in, that, uh, in the discussions of the Farm Bill. So we're going to advocate strongly that uh, cotton go back into Title I has been planned. I think that's certainly Chairman uh, Conaway's plans. I think the Senate will go along with that as long as the dairy uh, fix is in there as well. There's probably going to be more conversation about the, the full, full time or further down dairy program more so than the cotton program, which will be a fairly more simpler type of thing going back into the safety net of Title I with uh, uh, PLC or ARC payments. So hopefully that will uh, go for the future. You know that will be an effective in the 19 crop as well. So. Uh, I just want to thank you for what you all do. It's great to be part of an industry that uh, is productive and shows what the American spirit can really be about. I know that I mentioned trade, that's important. Uh, a legal workforce is important in many of your operations there and regulations certainly uh, come to bear. As you look at, uh, uh, look at the regulations that are put upon you, we know that that most onerous one that we knew about uh, last year was the waters of the U.S. The EPA is in the, in the throes of withdrawing that and getting some common sense definitions of what the waters of the U.S. mean. And uh, it won't mean every little mud puddle after it rains, uh, Tim, out here in the field becomes the waters of the U.S. So uh, you'll see some common sense areas there. The good thing about it, <coughs> I've never seen an administration work interagency like we're working today. Speaking of some of the chemicals that you use, the EPA obviously has the primary responsibility for, for that, but uh, uh, Administrator Pruitt does that in conjunction with biological opinions from 
not only from us in USDA, but from Fish and Wildlife and from the Department of Commerce through the National Marine Fisheries. So all those people have some equities in that. We had all four of the principals at the office, at the USDA offices last week, talking about different types of chemicals and how we could coordinate our biological opinions in a way that had sound science from every perspective, but uh, doesn't uh, deny the fact that we've got to have crop protection chemicals and insecticides that make your job and make our job of production uh, more effective and more efficient while preserving the environment and taking care uh, of the, of the eco ecology of the world. I'm, I'm a believer, having grown up in agriculture, I believe that uh, you know far our farmers are some of the best uh, conservationists out there. And that's what we want to get with our NRCS, working with you on your farm plans to make sure that we know about runoff, we know about drift, and uh, you know we know certainly we've heard loud and clearly in dealing with tough issues like the CAMBA this year, uh, we've, got, we've got things that we've got to deal with and things that we've got to work on, but uh, you've got an agency that want to work, wor works with you and not against you. I, uh, I know I've been part of the private sector for a while and uh, really all my life until I took that eight-year hiatus in, Georgia, in Atlanta, but uh, in part of the private sector, uh, uh, you've been gun to think that this was a federal government that was, was against you, not for you. And that's not what we want to do. We want a, we want a federal government that works with us and helps us be productive and, and helps us in the whole array of uh, our economy, our environment to do things. And I'm convinced that our, our uh, farmers are the best at that and you'll be supportive of that in, in many, many ways. So I want to thank you for what you do. I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and uh, allow me here at this, uh, at this event, which I think is a, a wonderful event in which to announce the co uh, cotton gin cost share program for the 2016 crop. And I hope that uh, you, uh, it's a seamless sign up. It should be, my people tell me that uh, it should be easy. So apply early, Have to, I guess that's almost next week and then March the 12th, you should be able to get those letters and uh, they should be pre-populated in a way that you could just certify that and send it back and hopefully have, uh, have a check really soon to allow you with your spring uh, uh, spring cost and input costs there going forward, maybe even pay down a little bit of debt there that uh, I'm sure none of you have. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm proud to be in this job. People ask me how I like Washington, D.C. I say, that's the wrong question. I love the job. <laughs> but uh, I'd much rather be doing it. I'd much rather be teleworking from Georgia and uh, watching those uh, cotton and corn, bean and wheat fields growing down there. But Nonetheless, we've got a great opportunity here. I think uh, if you look at our president, understands being from Queens, New York, he's shown an intuitive understanding of what the hardworking men and women of agriculture contribute to this thing. From the very first day he swore me in, uh, he signed her, the executive order right there in front of a group of growers uh, there that uh, the agriculture uh, executive order requiring us to study uh, the and barriers for agriculture and rural prosperity right there. 22 different fed federal agencies coming together. We've highlighted the aspects of different things of, of that from a workforce to for regulation to, to broadband, the kind of things that you need. All this equipment that you see out here is depending on connectivity, not just in the farm steads, not just in the small towns, but in the fields and farms of America across the way to connect us and to allow the American spirit of agriculture from an entrepreneurship, from an e-commerce perspective, from a telemedicine perspective, from a uh, uh, distance learning perspective, all those kind of things that, that mean that. We've got the attention of the White House. We're focusing on the American Center of Innovations working with us on that issue, as well as modernizing our, uh, our USDA in a way that you can take those uh, all those autonomous uh, driven uh, combines and trucks and tractors or tra tractors out there and while you're scrolling through the web you can we want you to be able to do and communicate work with the, the USDA reporting crops doing those kind of certifications signing uh, electronic signing papers there where you don't have to get off the farm and drive into town to do that our farmers.gov is going to be our new portal uh, you can always go to usda.gov but farmers.gov is a new portal will be growing out more and more to have an interactive interface 
I mean, if American technology can allow us to, uh, to interface electronically from a sales perspective, there are a lot of tools out there electronically for growers today to utilize. And we want to make those available. We want USDA to come into the modern area, the 21st century of technology to allow you all to, uh, to do that. So take a look at farmers.gov. Frankly, many of you are already ahead of the curve. We'd love to have your ideas about the things you want to see in farmers.gov uh, to do that. So I just want to thank all of you for what you do every, each and every day, uh, growing the fiber for the world in many ways, and uh, not only fiber, but fuel and food uh, around the world. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, and uh, we want to be with you, not against you. God bless you. Thank you.